How's everyone doing? Today, we have two wonderful guests with us to join the table and talk about marketing, AI, and just disrupting technologies that we all need to be aware of. Over here, we have Jonathan, co-founder of an on-demand subscription service. And we also have Matt with us. Matt, you are the founder and CEO of a very interesting New York creative firm. Yes, I am. <laughs> all right, so let's start off with, uh, with a light question. What do you guys think is the easiest business for anyone to start in 2023? That's, that's a light question. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll start with this one. Right. Um, yeah. I'm a little biased, of course, <clears throat> but I think uh, an online-based business is definitely going to be the, uh, the easiest uh, one, just given the amount of uh, technological resources, uh, AI, which I'm sure we'll get into. Mm. Uh, but in addition to that, just uh, overall marketing, accessibility when it comes to social media. So I, selfishly speaking, I'd probably say an uh, online-based business. Yeah, you know, and I actually want to piggyback on what you just said. Um, with AI... Happening right now, I think everyone's aware of ChatGPT, OpenAI, Dolly, all these. AI, you cannot escape AI nowadays, but I think now is the best time to actually become a designer or an artist because there's never been more exposure to the industry than now. So that's mm. that's my two cents. If, if you ever want to you know, know uh, uh, the, the best time to become an artist, now's the time. So that's my two cents. How about you, Matt? What do you think? <sighs> gotta say an agency. Agency? <laughs> I gotta say an agency. Your bias. Of course I am. Come on now. You have me on for a reason. But I, honestly, I, I would definitely say an agency because one, you don't need a license to get started. It's simple. I can, any, anybody from the street can honestly start one if they really, really wanted to and have the passion for it. And you know, two, we're the middlemen. And if I want to, I can you know hire out whatever I need to be done for my brand, my business, anything. Mm -hmm. That's interesting that you said that you don't need a license. Actually, you know, wasn't aware of that. Um, so what are, what are some requirements? Are there any degrees, certification? Like, do you need an MBA to start a agency? I mean, I started mine in an hour. You know, <laughs> an hour. Like, you know so, okay. but it, especially in 2023, it's, it really is as simple as starting in an hour. I, I, it, it sounds ridiculous, but it's, it's really true. You know, all you have to do is just kind of decide what you want to be an agency of, you know, so we'll piggyback off of the design and marketing, you know, if you wanted to be an agent of that. And, you know, what you would do is just just test out design services, you know, that other agencies are actually using. Um, like, for example, I used I use Penji. You, you guys have heard of those Penji, right? Penji. Hmm. Never, never, never heard of uh, Penji. Have you heard of Penji, John? Not. not Doesn't ring a bell at all. Oh, <laughs> fair enough. I, I would even uh, piggy uh, back off of that. I think more or less it requires grit and determination more so than anything else. <clears throat> oh, um, yeah. Simply because when you're, when you're doing things, when you're uh, in the world of business, um, you know, I, I myself, I only have a normal standard university degree. I don't have an MBA or anything like that, but uh, I did experience failure quite mm. often. And so my, uh, my lesson, I would say, is the, the school of hard knocks where you know, you're constantly getting thrown into the dirt and then getting back up. So I would say, you know, to expand on your question about what did you learn of the certification processes? I don't want to use the hu the hustle culture, but I, I would say, you know, that that definitely has a lot to do with it. Mm, yeah. Okay. You know what? I want to circle back to what you were saying, Matt. I really like what you were saying just now. And I thought a lot of people might be curious. You said that you started your agency in one hour. Mm -hmm. So let's bring that up. Yeah. While we're on the topic, how did you start your agency in one hour? And how would you recommend someone do that in 2023? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I can't stress this enough. You know, I started mine in an hour. Anybody in 2023, especially nowadays, can start their agency in an hour. So I actually have all these these bullet points I have written because this is this is crucial information for anybody out there who wants to get this done. So, you know, first, you have to de decide what type of agency you want to be. You know, once you finally get that, you know, personally, you know, if, I, if, I, if I'm really being honest here, I feel like design and design and marketing agencies are, are the easiest to start, most profitable, hands down, right? But anyway, getting back to the to the points here. So then um, I'd actually test out different design services that other agencies are actually using. So I think I said before I was uh, working with this uh, service called Penji. Have you guys heard of them? Penji doesn't ring a single bell. Yeah, have you heard of uh, Penji, John? Not yet, no. No? Oh. <laughs> so... 
Anyway, I, I use Penji, right? So I, I use them to design the logo and the branding for my agency. And then um, I signed up for Squarespace or, or Wix, if anybody you know uses that, design the website. And then I had a chat GPT, all the copy for me, all the marketing tools, everything of that. Even like the business plan too? Even the business plans. Wow. A- any, anything that, that, that really gets the inner workings of my business together had all that written down for them. Right. Then I combined that with uh, Penji and, you know, we had this downloadable ebook. Perfect. Because so was was the download ebook? Was that something that Penji and ChatGPT created for you? Yes, I see. They 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 created that for me. It was, mm-hmm. it was, it was perfect marriage. You, you read a lot about this stuff online uh, about you know businesses coming in and, and um, being created in an hour or so. Um, mm. But you know, you're living proof that you've been able to do it. Were you yes. ever, have you ever decided to use like a, a AI designer of some sorts when trying to do this for your ebook or did you just strictly want it to go a different route? Um, I, I, I play with AI a little bit, you know, but if I really, you know, anything f- with my business and this is, you know, me personally, I feel you can't outdo a human being and, and, and what they bring to the table. Because essentially, you know, art and any type of design, it comes from the soul. You can't, you, you, can't gener- you can't recreate that feeling, at least artificially. That's just my personal take on all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I, I very strongly uh, agree with you on, uh, on that one. Um, but I'm actually kind of curious, like, what was the process like? Like, how were you able to get clients, though? Because... Sure, you have the AI piece, and that's great. You have the the ebook, and that's great too. But mm. now you kind of have to make money, right? Yeah. So you know, as I as I said before, and I'll I'll pull it up here. You know, once I finished the 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 ebook with with ChatGPT and, and Penji, you know, what I ended up doing that drove all the traffic. Mm. To, to Facebook, Google, and, you know, especially now when all the kids are TikTok, you know, and put a dance with it and everything. Nice. Were you <laughs> dancing? Of course. Nice. You know, da, 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 nice. All that. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, so, you know, that's, that's how I would get all my leads for the agencies, you know, and whenever I got a client, I'd let Penji know, and they would do all the work, charge whatever they wanted. It was, it was perfect. And I, that's why I'm saying it is not hard in 2023, start an agency in an hour. <laughs> one, 60 <Wow>. minutes. <clears throat> yeah, we'll have to make a clip out of that one. Yeah. Okay, so on to the next question. This one I um, uh, have for both of you guys. Yeah. How do you each price your services? Do you want to start, Matt? Yeah, sure. So um, I, I have here on, on my site, right? So, you know, for my agency, we, we offer branding, Animations, illustrations, web design, presentations. Honestly, whatever Penji can can do for me, we got it right. <laughs> and um, yeah, <laughs> that's it right there. But um, so, what do you what do you charge your clients per design work, oh, per design project? Meat and potatoes of it all. So five thousand, you know, per brand kit. Um, about you know a thousand to two thousand for for any animations, and then for websites, fifteen hundred. All right, so so I have to I have to, if you don't mind me asking, of course, yeah. like you know that those numbers are awesome. But what what are you, do you mind if I ask what your profit margins are? Not at all. So the pro plan for Penji was four ninety nine, but I ended up switching over to this enterprise three three thousand three thousand a month. So you know, given that three thousand dollars is my entire production team, creative, all of that, the entire design team for three thousand, entire design team. All of it for three thousand. I I gotta say ninety percent. Kidding. Ninety percent profit. Ninety. It's like nine nine zero nine with a zero. Nine zero. I am not kidding. Nine nine zero. I have. I I would say definitely ninety percent. Okay. I mean, it, it it definitely sounds about right. Given you're charging five thousand for brand kit, you mentioned one to two thousand for animation. Ninety percent profit. Wow. Yes. That is uh that is incredible. <clears throat> Kudos. <clears throat> so uh, Jonathan, uh, how about you guys? Like um. Your company, how do you guys price your service? When, when we first started the, the company, one of the things that we were trying to accomplish very early on is making our services accessible to those who need it most. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, whether that be a nonprofit or a digital marketing agency or even a small business, uh, we really wanted to find a better way to understand what they could pay first and then from there grow the service 
uh, and grow the pricing based on what most of our the people that we operate with can afford. Okay. Uh, and then based on that, uh, that's kind of how we would determine. So it's not like the sexiest way, you know. It's definitely not the uh, you know throw a, a stick it, a sticker price and then everybody runs to it. It's more or less uh, research, right? Yeah. I think we've interviewed close to around two hundred people to just get a gauge, you know, mm. do you want to pay a dollar? Do you want to pay a thousand dollars? Do you want to pay $10,000? And then based on that set of criteria, that's when we were able to kind of come to a conclusion of, of, of our, so, um, your version and story is far more sexier than, than ours. Ours had a lot to do with analytics and numbers. Yours was, I would say, uh, you know, definitely a cooler story. I have a question for both you guys. Huh. How would you think AI will affect businesses? in the very near future, given that it's already out there. Mm. What do you guys think? Or has it already affected your business? Well, I mean, I definitely think, uh, if you don't mind, I'll yeah, yeah, take yeah. this one. Yeah. Um, I mean, AI is definitely a very interesting dynamic. It's very popular, especially when it comes to uh, Twitter, which, by the way, I believe is the ultimate social network. Um, you go on any social network right now, you're going to see chat GPT, <laughs> right? It's going to be uh, paraded within your, your social uh, platform and brain. And you're led to believe that chat GPT is going to replace jobs. Mm. Um, and that very much so may be the case for some. Uh, but I think the most important aspects of AI is um, you have to be able to understand how to use it. So sure, it's there. Sure, it's available. Uh, but at the same time, if you don't know how to use the tools, right? If I were to give you, um, you know, uh, meat, um, potatoes, peas, carrots, and uh, milk, would you be able to make a meal, or would you would it just be a mosh pause of, of random things, right? Uh, more often than not, a chef would be able to turn that into a formidable uh, meal, yeah. whereas a cook would be able to just cook it, eat it, and not necessarily care about the taste. So I think the same rules apply when it comes to to AI. Uh, but I would actually be curious. Uh, hear what you think like what what is your opinion on on that situation uh, i think ai without a doubt is going to eventually affect every industry whether directly or indirectly we're seeing the first wave of ai right now which is an ai that is not able to make decisions yet it's only taking it's, it's aggregating data that's already out there whether it's design or written work it's taking what's already out there hmm. and it's answering a question. So right now you give it something, you ask it a question, whether it's a prompt or a, a set of instructions, and it simply does just that. It doesn't have the ability to solve problems yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for example, you can't ask it to, you know, uh, solve your business problem or figure out uh, how to cure cancer just yet. But that is something that I think Eventually, when AI is able to make that next evolution from simply taking in input and giving out output where I wouldn't say it's conscious, but it has a level of authority that people trust AI enough where it's actually answering questions, questions that would require years upon years or decades of research or just an insurmountable amount of data for any one person or even computer to calculate. That's when I think it's going to be scary but also really interesting because mm. the solutions that AI can come up with is, I mean, imagine an entity that has the collective human experience, knowledge, everything, literally omnipotent in some, you know, theological sense. Yeah. What could that thing or being do if you give it the power to not just answer questions, but come up with its own questions to answers and create solutions. So so right here, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that we have an agency owner and also the co-founder of Penji that you know. Jonathan is actually the co-founder of Penji. Love your product. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, wow, okay. Surprise, surprise. We actually didn't know you were a customer of Penji. <clears throat> uh, well, hey, <clears throat> keep, keep yeah. helping me, please. <laughs> yeah, the universe is just inviting people together to fight this battle against AI. But 